Earth. This story is the giant who had no heart in his body from um, Tales from the Field. There was a king who had uh, seven sons and they had come of age and it was time for them to go out to find a princess. But the, the father, he he couldn't live without him. And, and although the six older sons were like, we, we have to go, the, the king decided, well, I'm going to keep my youngest. So they're about to go out and the king gives them the most fanciest of clothes and and, um, and the most beautiful of horses and golds and gems and all forms of wealth and riches to um, to take with them and he's like the only the only thing I wish is that on your journey that you also find a princess for your younger brother and so they agree and go on a journey and and search from one king to another and kingdom to another and eventually end up far, far away uh, where this one kingdom uh, had six princesses and, and they were the most beautiful princesses they ever had seen. So they spent days and days and days wooing and, and trying to win their hearts and finally um, they accomplished that and, and marry and, and are returning back to their father having long forgotten that they were supposed to find a, uh, someone for for their younger brother. And along their way, they ended up coming to a giant's castle, and the giant, seeing them, ran down the mountain and quickly turned them into stone. While well, months and months had passed by, and the king continued to wait and wait for his sons to return, and 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 they never did. And his younger his son kept on saying, I need to go out. I need to go out and find him, Father. But he was like, if if I was to lose you, I would have no reason to live. So no, you can't go. But as with all things, uh, the son kept on chiseling away at his father's resolve until finally the father agreed to let him go. But he's like, I don't have any fine horses for you or fine clothing. I gave everything to your to your brothers. And he's like, that's all right. I, I don't need them. Just give me enough food for, for the journey, and and I'll be back, and I'll be back with my brothers. Well, the king, unable to stop him, gave him what food he asked for, and um, sent him on his way. Well, about a day's journey down the road, uh, the son came to a raven that was laying in the middle of a, of the road, and it was all hurt and. And, and wounded and so the son was like you know what's going on and the raven's like i got ran over and and i can't move so the son ended up picking up the raven and fixing his wing and and uh, sending him on his way and then uh after another day's journey the father or the son comes up to uh, a river and, and he's about to cross it when he notices this huge salmon flopping on the side and the salmon's like help me help me i got um, thrown out of the water and I can't get back in. And, and so the younger son's like, oh, well, all right. So he pushes the salmon back into the water and sends him on his way. The son crosses the, the river and heads further down the trail when he comes to this wolf that had, hadn't been, hadn't had any food for weeks and weeks and was starving and, and, and dying and, and the wolf's like please please I need food I need food and so the son's like you know I, I only have so much but here here you go and, and he offers the food to the wolf and the wolf uh, thanks him and tells him uh, you know you know I will one day help you and the son's like I don't see how you can help me but um, but I'm on a journey looking for my brothers and the wolf's like oh uh, one day's journey from here, there's a, a giant's castle, and, and he, you'll see that your your brothers and, and their wives have been turned into stone. Well, at this point, the son was, you know, very frightened because what is he going to be able to do? He's he's not going to be able to beat a giant, much less deal with its magic. And and but you know, he wanted his brothers, so he's like, "What am I to do?" And the wolf's like, "Don't don't worry about it." 
during the way day, during the day the giant goes out and uh, so you can sneak up on the side there's a small door and you go inside and you'll find a maiden and she will tell you what to do so the son decided well you know that's the best plan that I got and so he goes there and waits behind a rock watching the castle until sure enough the giant leaves for the day and so he walks up around the side and finds the door that the wolf had told him about and he opens it and walks down the hall and comes to this most beautiful maiden that he's ever seen and she looks at him and she's like what are you doing you're gonna die here and he's he ends up telling her the story about his brothers and about how he is here to save them and um how he didn't know how he was going to do it, but he he had to fight the giant somehow. And and the maiden's like, no, 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 no. I'll tell you what to do. Go hide under his bed, and, and, and I will talk to him, and we'll try to figure out what we can do. So the son ends up hiding under the bed, and when the giant comes home, and he brings home a, um, a, a cow that he had found in a field to eat for dinner, and he's sniffing around. He's like, what's that smell? It smells like... Smells like there's some other human in here. And, and the maiden's like, no, no, there was a magpie that flew over the house and dropped a, an arm down the chimney. And I, I try to get rid of it as fast as I can. But you know that, that smell, that stench, it, it just sticks around. And so the giant's like, well, all right, whatever. And um, cooks, his, uh, cooks up his cow and has a nice feast. And he's sitting there rocking on his huge chair and he's in a good mood and the, and the maiden's like where where can i ask you a question he's like sure 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 anything you want and she's like where is your heart how is it that you can live without your heart and the giant's chuckling and stuff oh uh, i you know i don't need it as long as it's near me i i can survive and she's like well, where is it and he's like well i'm not gonna tell you but then after a couple of minutes he's like well i'm fond of you why not it's right there, underneath, um, right before the door, underneath one of the slabs. Well, night passes, and the giant goes to sleep, and and uh, and the maiden and the and the son were like, "All right, in the morning we will uh, we'll get the heart." And so in the morning, the giant goes out like he does every day, and they run over to the front door, and they're picking one slab after another after another, but there's no heart. And the maiden's like, ah, he, I've been fooled. I've been tricked. And, and, and that's okay. We'll try it again tonight. So to cover up all that they had done, she took a bunch of flowers and strewed them all over the ground. And, and then once again, the sun hid under the bed. And as the giant returned home and he looked down on the floor, he's like, what is this? And she's like, well, I, I was sitting around and I was thinking about your heart and how, you know, I, I couldn't believe that. You just leave it there, and I felt bad, so I just thought I'd strew a bunch of flowers around the floor and and, and honor and, and and to show love. And the giant's like, ha, ha, "Oh, you silly lady, my heart's not there." And she's like, "What? What do you mean? What do you mean?" He's like, "I, I wouldn't put my heart under the floor. It's in the cabinet over there." So then, once again, giant falls asleep, and the son and the maiden make a plan and in the morning they'll go searching through the cabinets try to find the heart and so in the morning the giant leaves and they go rummaging through all the cabins and they don't find the heart and again the the maiden's like ah he fooled us again i can't believe it he's always playing with my heart and my mind and so she again takes flowers and strews them all over the cabinets to try to hide from hide what they'd been doing and searching for and and again, all right, tonight I'll try again and we'll see about uh, if he'll tell us where his heart is. So the, uh, the son hides under the bed and giant comes home again and he sees the cabinets. He's like, what is all this? And the maiden's just like, well, I, I was just thinking about your heart and how you're just leaving it in this in the cabinets and, and it's dusty and, and spider webby and stuff. And I just, I couldn't stand it. So I thought I'd, lighten things up and, and to honor you with flowers and stuff and the giant shakes his head again and he's like you silly silly woman there's no my heart's not in there my heart's far away you'll never see it 
So again, he had brought home food and he'd cooked it and filled his belly. But he's, as the food was cooking, he also noticed the smell of another human around. He starts sniffing and he's like, what's that smell? And the man's like, oh, no, it was just another, another magpie came by and, uh, and threw an arm down the chimney. And I tried to get rid of it as quick as I can because I know how you can't stand the smell of of humans except me and but I this the smell lingers and stuff so I'm sorry well he feasts and lets it go about the smell and he's sitting there and the maiden once again asks him about his heart and he's like she'll never be able to find it anyways I might as well just tell her you know I'm fond of her and I like her and so he tells her that far in the distance there's an island an island, on the island is a cave with a gate. And deep down in the cave, there is a well. And on the well swims a duck. And in the duck, there is an egg. And within that egg is my heart. Well, in the morning, the giant left once again. And, and the sun, he's just like, well, I'm... I'm going to go out. I'm going to look for this, this island. I'm going to find this giant's heart. And I'm going to save my brothers. And, I, and I'll come back and save you, he tells him. So he goes out and he starts walking and walking. And, uh, and his horse had been one of the mills that the, the giant had found the horse wandering in the field. So he'd eaten it on the second day. And so the son was just walking and walking, and finally he came to the wolf, and the wolf was like, what are you doing? And the boy told the wolf about the story, and the wolf's like, jump on my back. I know where the island is. So they go racing and racing and racing, and they come to the island, and the wolf says, there it is. And he's like, do you trust me? And the boy's like, sure. And so the wolf jumps into the water and swims him across, and brings him to the very gates of the cave itself. And the boy's like, how, how am I supposed to open the gate and the wolf looks far far up and there's a key hanging up on the cliff far beyond the reach of the human and it's like well there's the key and, and the son's just like how am i going to get up there and right at that moment the raven that he had helped earlier had flown over and the boy called on raven 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 will you help me will you get that key and the raven's like sure th thanks for helping me before and so the raven flies up and grabs a key and drops it down for him. Well, the son opens the gate and walks down, 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 deep into the cave. And there, sure enough, is a well and a duck swimming on the well, in the water. Well, the boy, excited, grabs up the duck. But as he did so, the duck ended up laying the egg and dropping it into the water. Down, down, deep it goes. And the boy, he can't swim, is devastated for how is he going to get that egg and right at that moment the salmon that he had helped earlier had swum to the surface and heard his cries and was like what's up and the, the son told, tells the, the salmon what happened and it's like no problem so the salmon swims all the way 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 down down to the depths of the well and gets the egg and brings it back up to the boy well by this time the prince the, the, <laughs> had the egg in his hand and and the wolf says, go ahead and crush it. So the boy starts to squeeze it and in the distance they hear the giant yell, Aah! and the wolf says, squeeze it again, squeeze it again. And so the boy crushes really hard on the egg and again hears the giant screaming in the distance. And the boy is about to crush it all the way and the wolf says, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Ask the giant first to fix your, your brothers and, and their wives. So, so the prince goes and hunts out the giant and shows that he has the egg before the giant is able to harm him. And he says, I will, I will give you back your heart, but you must release my brothers and, and their wives. And so the giant is about to greet. And he's like, oh, and the maiden. And the, and the giant's like, uh, you know. But And then, and then but the younger son's like, about to crush him. The giant's like, all right. So he agrees. And so he does his thing. And he's like, they're free now. So give me my heart. And the boy's about to give the giant the heart. And the wolf's like, no, no, no. What are you doing? And so the wolf tells him, 
drop it on the ground and stomp on it. So the boy, listening to the wolf, drops the egg on the ground and stomps on it. And the giant roars in most, the loudest roar that you can imagine. And then instantly turns into stone himself, becoming a giant mountain. Well, the boy returns back to the giant's castle, and sure enough, his brothers and and their and their wives have been uh, turned back, and the maiden had been hiding in the house, fearful, afraid that that uh, that he'd failed. But when he came in and found her, she she promised her heart to him, and so the brothers and their wives returned back to the king and lived happily ever after.